All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, very much for coming tonight. On behalf of the student chapter of SME and the student mine rescue team, I'd like to thank you for giving up your seven o'clock on a Friday night to come listen to this, what should be very, very interesting talk. Uh, this talk uh, kind of is a big capstone for this entire week. Uh, this week, for those who missed on the news, um, was a huge week in collegiate mine rescue history. This is the very first ever collegiate mine rescue competition. We had teams from all over North America give up uh, you know, about a week of school to come in and uh, kind of showcase their skills and make sure they learned uh, a little something. Uh, we had the boys from Penn State over here. <laughs> we had the University of Arizona. Our, uh, our friends to the north, the University of British Columbia. And then we had uh, two teams from CSM. We had the CSM Blue team, which is the all guys team. And for the first time in mine rescue history, the CSM Silver team, which is the very first all female team. Now, events in the recent history have uh, show, uh, kind of shown us the need for mine rescue training and mine rescue safety. And uh, this, uh, this event shows that these students are really doing it for the right reasons. Uh, they give up their free time to train for you know, pretty much nothing at all. Um, but I couldn't think of a better way to top off this whole experience by bringing in Mr. Hart to talk about uh, his experience with the Chilean Mine Rescue. Um, Mr. Butler over here needs to be thanked. He was a, a very, very instrumental. Oh, he's back there. Sorry. Um, very, very instrumental in uh, allowing us, allowing us to uh, get in contact with Jeff and allowing him to uh, come here tonight. So, uh, Mr. Butler, thank you very much for your efforts. And for that, uh, I'm going to stop talking. And I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Hart, who is the driller in the Chilean Mine Rescue, one of the uh, most dramatic and uh, keystone events in recent years. So please welcome Mr. Jeff Hart. Thank you guys for coming and having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I always say if there's one thing that you take out of this, for me, it's whatever you decide to do in life, do it 100% to the best of your ability and with pride. And if everybody does that, the world would be a better place, I promise you. That's how I approach my job. And so there isn't anybody that I've worked with in the past or work with currently that doesn't tell you that I am a huge pride guy. So a little bit of the history for those of you that don't know about it. When the mine collapsed on August 5th, I'm in Afghanistan. Um, Lane Christensen Company is a huge company. We drill water wells all over the world. So we were drilling water wells on the forward operating bases for the United States Army. And so basically we're providing water so the Army has showers, warm food, um, all the things that they need so they can fight the war. So that's an extremely important job and it's, it's our way to say that we're supporting the troops. Well our communication is email or internet and so we we pop up the internet and search down through because it's not headline news because this mine just happens to be in Chile and so it was kind of in the back but if you go down to world news then it's there it says there's a mine collapse in Chile we're in the mining business so obviously we're interested in this because we don't know anything about it we're kind of following it and at that time the information was was minuscule there wasn't a whole lot of information on it. so we followed this every day um, talking amongst ourselves uh, we've got people you know in the mining business on mines every day um, our mineral exploration division has um, enormous amounts of people on mines every day and so we're we're concerned number one because we have a Chilean company that, that works around the same mines um, so we're following this as close as we can. 
just talking amongst ourselves, you know, we get into the eighth, ninth, tenth day, and all of the information that we're reading with what the resources were that these 33 men down there had, our thought process at this point, it's not really a rescue, it's a recovery. And that's still very important um, because there's still 33 families out there that have loved ones down there, no matter who they are. And so as we went through this and we talked amongst ourselves, all of a sudden on the 17th day, which was our 18th day, we pop up the internet and one of the drills um, was lucky enough to hit this tunnel and these 33 guys are alive, um, not necessarily healthy, but to have them alive is an amazing thing. So we, we couldn't believe it. But obviously, at that point, the news became a little more readily available. And we were really interested now because the chance of this taking a drill to get them out was pretty great. We, and it got very nerve wracking because it was getting very sticky. Um, Remembering we're in a hole that's curving around we we have drill pipe that you know in our minds we think it's Directly in the center of the hole the whole way down, but it's not it's rubbing all the way down And so we were losing a lot of our torque value in in wall rub and in what so things were getting real sticky and, and it was just nerve-wracking, but So we got down we had six inches left to drill and as everybody probably read, something on that rig popped. And today I still don't know what that was. It just scared us all to death because we're thinking, man, here we are this close and we're going to have to, you know, if the rig goes down, everything was already sticky. We've got a piece of pipe the same size as that hole covering it, so it's not like they can fit up through there. And so um, Nothing happened though. We didn't lose any hydraulic pressure. We didn't lose any air pressure. The rig was still running, so we continued to drill. So it's it's very emotional. I have, you know, an eight-year-old son that I also have a 17-year-old, but my eight-year-old, I know what it's like to leave my family because in my line of work, when I leave my family, I leave for 60, 90, 120 days at a time. So I know what it's like to leave my little boy and so it was very hard to go into this tent and as you watched on the video all of these families had boys and that was the important part is that everybody in this mine is a brother a son a husband a something to these families and it was just going in this tent was just intense because you realize even though we are just drillers we just we did a number of things we actually got an avenue to put these families back together and at the same time I was able to go home to mine. And you never know when something that you're doing for a living can affect an entire world um, and it just spreads. I mean and, and literally just just spread and so very very positive story. It's great for the industry. Um, it's absolutely great for you know our business and, and us personally but for the industry in, in general which a lot of you uh, young people are coming into um, it's very important that this day uh, um, that these guys got out is remembered and what you're doing in these mine rescue teams is far important I hope that we we practice it as much as we possibly can and never have to use it because obviously here in the United States, the, the best rescue is not a rescue, is to just follow what M. Shaw has out there to make sure that you know we do have rescue shafts in place, that if there's supposed to be ladders and ventilation shafts, that we, we make sure that there's ladders there. And if there's not, that we don't enter them, or, or we make sure that somebody's taking care of that because um, we definitely don't want to have to do another mine rescue. Um, they're often not a, a positive turnout, and so it's it's very important what you guys are doing. I know, you know, I can say for myself, I appreciate it. I think it's a fantastic thing, and I hope you guys keep it up. So.